Hello, friends. David Nuno, TechSags Rewind, brought to you by T-Mobile, OB, myself. What a good bow, uh, bow hour. The bow hour was good, but the go hour was even better. What would be the bow hour? The Billy hour? Uh, it was probably that domination that A&M had last week against. Yes, uh, they, uh, they certainly did. We banked on a couple of bold. things on, uh, on the go hour, OB. I'm, a, I'm banking on Anias and uh, who was it? Leon. Leon having a big game. Do you remember who you had? Well, um, I think Tyreek Chapel is going to be going to be tested. But if I was banking on some guys to have a big game, it's Anaya Smith and Devon. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Devon A. Chain and Isaiah Spiller. I think uh, you know a has been running the football so well, and and I expect that to continue against an Ole Miss defense that's quite frankly had trouble stopping the run. They're not good. They're not good. Hopefully, AM can rush for 250 to 322 yards. That would be my hope and my desire. We also had uh, Lucci talking about this game, his thoughts. He's in for two hours. Uh, we did around Aguilam with young Richard Zane and also the final countdown, which we made fun of Olin a couple of times. <sighs> the, you know, s- success breeds envy, I guess. Right, there you go. It is Texas Axe Rewind. What are you banking on? I'm banking on both uh, Isaiah Spiller and Devon A. Chain surpassing the 100 yard mark against Ole Miss. I feel very, I feel confident very, about that too. Very secure in that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm looking for the Aggies. You asked, you said like earlier today, you said 280, I think, or 270. Yeah. I think a better line would have been 250. Okay. And uh, I think the A&M, I think A&M could approach that. So I'm going to bank on at least 251 with well, both of those guys going over 100. I'm trying to find. Here's Owen and Brenham about that. I'm thinking we're running for 300-plus against Ole Miss this weekend. This is on the AMB text line. And hold them to 14 points. They gave up 284 to Liberty on the ground. That's including nine sacks against Malik Willis. Mm-hmm. Our defense is next-level elite, just as good as Georgia. The narrative will change after this weekend. It might. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. OB, I'm going to bank on... Anaya Smith having a big game. Okay. And, and the, there's a couple reasons off of that. He's coming off a game where he had a, a, a pretty big drop, and I know he wants to right the ship. He's also coming off not having 50 yards receiving in his last three games. So I think for those reasons, he's due. He's due. He's due for one of those, like, Anaya's moments. And we know how great he is. So I, I believe he is going to have – it's going to be one of those that during the game, he's going to have that play, and people are going to be like, Nuno called it. And, of course, you called the Spiller A-chain. I think we all see that coming. But I'm, I'm, I'm going with Anias as well. Here's a little note that I found on CBS. We are ranked 59th nationally in plays of 25 yards or more. So you know what I'm saying? When we talk about those long plays, it's usually thinking about Demas. We're usually thinking about Caleb Chapman. Anias is going to have one of those plays that he breaks him off something for 40-plus, and he's going to have himself a big game. I'm going to add another bank on it. I'm just going to make it quick. Leon O'Neal. I think he's due for a pick as well. He's playing so well this year. Somebody, somebody. I, I think the guy that has a chance, going to get the most chances, is going to be Chappelle. Ch- yeah. Chappelle. How about, um, how about A-Chain, if he gets a chance to return one, returning a kickoff for a touchdown against Ole Miss, which is uh, tied for like eighth in the SEC in kickoff coverage. So I feel really good about this game, but that mm. scares me. And, I could see this game being close, close, like we've seen all year long. Mm-hmm. But I could also see a game where A&M is in complete control all game long because that defense is so good. It's interesting. Auburn, I mean, Auburn. Ole Miss is an interesting game because they're an interesting team because of the injuries. And, and I heard you just now talking about Corral and that ankle. Um, you look at the last four games they've averaged around 27 points a game. And they're not scoring a ton, which and they were scoring a ton early on. And then you factor in when they played when they played uh, Bama, they were shut down. They moved the ball, but they were shut down. And you really go into SEC play and you go, well, well who did they light up? And it's probably just Arkansas. Uh, I like A&M's chances to – to move the ball and score points in this one. And then defensively, it is interesting because I know this defense is really good. I also know this is a tougher matchup than most for this defense. And it's also, in reality, it's probably probably the second 
best offense they will face this year. I still think Bama. At that um, time. At that time. And I still think Bama in, in general, is with that with those two receivers and the running back and, and young at quarterback, I still think compared to a, a banged up Ole Miss, but they are, they are a team that I think is a bad matchup for this defense. But I think this defense can overcome that because, A, they're playing really well right now. B, they're healthy. And C, Mike Elko's calling the shots. So I'm with you. Like, I, I could see the Aggies pulling away in like a, you know, 38 20 type of thing. Um, or I could see it being a back and forth game where, where if Lane Kiffin finds some weaknesses over the top early or the Aggies are having trouble with those crossing routes and then it opens things up on the ground for him a little bit, Lebby gets in a play call and rhythm, and then the Aggies have to kind of score with them. I don't think it's going to be a shootout, but I mean, you, I could see a 38-20 game. I could see it being, you know, 38-31 type of thing, 34-30. So if you look at the couple of the games they've played in this year, the Alabama game, not really the Arkansas game as much, but certain games in last weekend, if they aren't going forward on fourth as often as they do and some of the bonehead decisions at the time, you know, mm -hmm. if they work, it's great. Those games, they score more points and it doesn't look as lopsided. Even the Alabama game, I remember that game, so sometimes that he would make decisions. So that's where I... I I wonder which lane are we going to get. Well, you get the same lane almost every time. So the real question is, do they convert the fourth downs or not? He's going to do what he does, right? Yeah. Like you, you can't expect him to all of a sudden be by the book and or even, even more so conservative. He's going to do what he does, and you, just, you know you're going to have to at times stop them on, on four downs. And that, that makes this game, any game against them, so interesting because – you're not talking about like the occasional four point swing. You're talking about seven points. Okay, so if you've been paying attention this week, you probably know that it's National Signing Day for all non football sports. I've compiled a list of all the official announcements from Texas A&M Athletics in uh, today's Around Aggie Land story, but there's too many to list on air right now. Just want to say congratulations to everybody in the class of 2022 for officially becoming a fight in Texas Aggie this weekend and or this week, excuse me. And moving right along into football news, Tyree Johnson set small SEC players of the week this week. Tyreek Chappelle, Bryce Foster, Ruben Fathery, Sean Alexander, freshman of the year award watch list members Kenyon Green one of four finalists for the Lombardi Trophy mm -hmm. Lombardi Award uh, A&M's up to three spots to number 11 in this week's college football playoff ranking they'll face number 15 Ole Miss this Saturday night in Oxford six o'clock kickoff on ESPN basketball season's officially here and the women's team's 2-0 they won their opener on Tuesday night defeating Corpus Christi uh, 87 to 54 Kayla Wells 18 points and seven boards in the opener and then last night they defeated Southern they're 92 to 32. Five Aggies scoring in double figures. Jordan Nixon leading the way with 13. And before the game, the Aggies honored the 2020-2021 SEC regular champion team. Uh, they won. They got their uh, championship ring, so that was a nice moment for Gary Blair and company. On the men's side, they won their opener on Wednesday night, defeating North Florida 64 to 46. Mm -hmm. Henry Coleman the third. 27 points in his Texas A&M debu debut. Of course, he's the transfer from Duke. Devin Johnson, in place of Buzz Williams, got his first career win as head coach. They'll host Abilene Christian tonight, 7 o'clock on the SEC Network Plus, and then Buzz Williams will return on Sunday when the Aggies host Texas A&M Corpus Christi, 2 o'clock tip-off on the SEC Network Plus. Volleyball is in Lexington this weekend for a pair of matches against number 7 Kentucky. They'll face the Wildcats on Saturday and Sunday, 3 o'clock on Saturday, SEC Network Plus on Sunday, 1 o'clock first serve on main channel SEC Network. Equestrian teams travel to the state of Tennessee. They'll face UT Martin today, 10 a.m. That is when that meet starts, and then they'll face Lynchburg tomorrow, 10 a.m. That is a jumping seat 
only meet. In swimming and diving news, Curtis Matthews and Amy Wilson were named the SEC's Men's and Women's Divers of the Week for their performance versus TCU last Friday. And the last thing going on in uh, town this weekend is women's tennis. They'll host the 2021 Texas A&M Fall Invitational at the George P. Mitchell Tennis Center as they're wrapping up their fall slate. That event begins today and will conclude on Sunday. Be bad let's go. Week. Let's fix right, this Number crap. 11, Texas A&M, 7-2, 4-2. Two in the SEC at number 15 Ole Miss, seven and two, three and two in the SEC, six o'clock, Vaught Hemingway Stadium. ESPN broadcast, the Aggies favored by two and a half. Who goes first? I got Seth's it. already made his pick. I got AM. I'll make it easy. I'm not picking I like lose or A&M win by one. to win, but Ole Miss to cause good. No, I'm just kidding. I think the Aggies <laughs> cover this. I and tried I, that I last think week. I think A and M I did too. And it looked pretty good when it was in there at I six know. to three. Um I think the Aggies cut. This is a, obviously a tiny spread. I think I don't think they do that thirty-eight twenty type of thing, but I do think A and M wins the game. Uh, I think they pull not convinced. Well, convincingly, yes, in the style, but maybe not. I don't know if you'd call like a eight ten point win. Convinced. Well, I think ten though. I think in, in you know. At the end of the game, A&M's running the ball, running out clock, and Ole Miss could is be ten. Sprint. Could be three. Yeah, but I think it's close, and the Aggies get a late score, and they they do win. Actually, I think that's what I did with Auburn last week. I think they do win by double digits for the second week in a row. But a real competitive game. I don't think it's like a. Any, I think it's like a four point game that turns into an eleven at some point. Mm. All right, we'll close it out. No, oh, no, 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 more. We don't leave. No, oh. We don't leave until you tell the people what to do. Like, subscribe. Oh, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and uh, send Obi a hello. All those things. <laughs>